We want to share with you some important information about your scheduled open heart surgery. This should address any concern you may have. In this video, you will learn what will happen before, during, and after your surgery, as well as what you need to know and do when you return home from the hospital. Let's talk about what happens before your surgery. On the day of your surgery, you will check in at the front desk. You will then be directed to the preoperative holding area. Your family will be able to join you at that time. The preoperative area is where the staff will get you ready for your procedure. You will meet the anesthesiologist and nurses who will care for you during the surgery. At this time, you will also have an opportunity to speak to your surgeon and ask any last minute questions. Family and friends will be asked to wait in the waiting area during part of your preoperative preparation. Next, your nurse or anesthesiologist will insert an intravenous or IV into your vein for medication. The anesthesiologist will also place an arterial line into your wrist for continuous blood pressure monitoring and blood work. Before you are moved to the operating room, your family will be escorted to the operating room waiting area where they will be updated regularly during your surgery, which can last from four to six hours. Let's talk about what's going to happen next in the operating room. Your anesthesiologist will give you some medicine to ensure you are comfortable. When the anesthesiologist has verified that you are unconscious and comfortable, they will insert a breathing tube and connect it to a breathing machine. The anesthesiologist will put a central line into your chest or your neck to improve IV access during and after the procedure. Next, a Swan-Gans catheter will be placed in your chest or neck. This is a special catheter used to monitor your heart during and after the procedure. Finally, a catheter will be placed in your bladder to drain urine during the surgery. This catheter will remain in place for at least 24 hours after surgery. Now you're ready for the procedure. In order to reach your heart, the surgeon will cut through your sternum, which is the bone in your chest protecting your heart. If you are having coronary artery bypass surgery, the surgeon will need to use some of your arteries and or veins from other parts of your body to bypass the blockage in your heart. If arteries are needed, the surgeon will use your internal mammary arteries, which he or she will get once your chest is opened. If veins are needed, they will come from your leg. Your surgeon will harvest these vein segments in a minimally invasive procedure before the open heart surgery begins. You may have some pain at the incision site, but your leg veins will still function normally even after a segment is removed. If you are having a valve repaired or replaced, the surgeon will not need to use arteries or veins. If you are having valve surgery because one or more of your valves are not functioning adequately, your surgeon may recommend surgical repair or replacement. If you need a valve replacement, your surgeon may use a mechanical valve or a tissue valve, depending on your age and medical conditions. When your doctor is finished, he or she will close your chest using wires. These wires will stay in place forever. But don't worry, these wires won't interfere with any MRIs you may have in the future, and you won't set off any airport alarms. The last step in your procedure is for the surgeon to close the incision in your chest. Let's talk about what you should expect after surgery. You'll be taken directly from the operating room to the intensive care unit, or ICU. At this point, you will still have your breathing tube in along with the central line and Swan-Gans catheter in your chest or neck, the arterial line, and the catheter in your bladder. After the main part of the surgery is complete, drainage tubes will be placed in your chest to monitor bleeding. Your surgeon will also place temporary pacing wires on your heart muscle. These wires will help you regulate your heart's rhythm if your heart rate is slow after surgery. They will be removed towards the end of your hospital stay. When you wake up after surgery, the staff will concentrate on getting your pain under control and making you as comfortable as possible. The breathing tube will still be there. You need to be awake and responding to directions from the healthcare team before the breathing tube can be removed. The breathing tube will feel uncomfortable, but the healthcare team will remove the tube as soon as it is safe to do so. Your blood pressure, heart rate, and blood glucose levels will be monitored very closely. Even if you are not diabetic, Monitoring your blood glucose levels is very important to prevent infection and other complications. Surgery can cause your blood sugar to increase, 
so you may be placed on insulin after surgery to control your blood sugar and promote healing. You will normally spend one to two days in ICU. We encourage only immediate family and close friends as visitors while in the ICU so that the care team can concentrate on your care. Schedules and visiting times will vary depending on which hospital you are in. For visiting hours, please check with the hospital staff. One of the tools you will use during therapy is a heart pillow, which helps protect and support your chest during recovery. You will be taught how to use it to protect your sternum after surgery. Once your blood pressure, heart rate, and blood circulation are stable, you will progress to sitting in a chair. We encourage you to get out of bed to sit in a chair for all meals. The healthcare team will help you sit up and get to the edge of the bed with your heart pillow, which you're going to use to reinforce your chest during activity. When you get to the edge of the bed, you're going to plant your feet flat on the floor, lean forward, and push up with your knees. When you sit down, you're going to do the exact same thing by making sure your legs hit the back of the chair. You will lean back and sit down. That's how you'll get up and sit down for the next four to six weeks. Be sure to practice this technique at home following your discharge. You will also use your heart pillow to reinforce your chest during your breathing exercises. Your respiratory therapist will review these with you. Walking is an important part of your recovery. Walking at least four times a day in the hallway will help prevent blood clots and pneumonia and enhance your recovery after surgery. Our healthcare team will help make sure you meet this goal. If needed, therapy experts will assist you with walking. You will normally spend one to two days in the ICU and three to four days on the medical surgical floor. Although everyone recovers differently from surgery, you can expect to stay in the hospital about five days. Before you leave the hospital, your doctor and nurses will talk to you about some activities you'll want to do and some that you should avoid when you get home. Let's briefly discuss some of those now. Here are some activity restrictions to keep in mind. Don't push, pull, or lean down to pick up anything heavier than 10 pounds. Don't reach behind your back or squeeze your shoulder blades together. You will not be able to drive for four to six weeks. You won't be able to return to work for four to six weeks. This, of course, depends on your doctor's advice and the type of work you do. Be sure to schedule a follow-up appointment with your doctors one to three weeks after your surgery. In four to six weeks, when you're completely cleared by your surgeon and your cardiologist, your cardiologist might suggest outpatient cardiac rehab. Outpatient cardiac rehab occurs at an outpatient facility. Most patients go three times a week for about an hour per session. Your daily diet should consist of heart-healthy foods. A nutritionist may speak with you about this before you leave the hospital. We hope this video has answered any questions you may have had and helped alleviate your fears. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask your doctor or hospital staff at any time. Thank you for watching, and thank you for choosing Houston Methodist.